Every once in a while, the most compelling part of a wrestling show may actually be who isn't there. When these performers walked out of an event, it became a very big deal. Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out before the May 16, 2022 episode of Monday Night Raw, reportedly due to issues pertaining to their booking as the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions. They had been booked for the main event that evening, a six-pack challenge in which the winner earned a shot at the Raw Women's Championship. WWE's public reaction was swift and harsh. That night, the company issued a lengthy statement on WWE.com that read, in part, Banks and Naomi claimed they weren't respected enough as tag team champions, and even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Banks and Naomi were also criticized on air, particularly by commentator Michael Cole, who announced the two had been suspended indefinitely. Both wrestlers were removed from the video intros on WWE programming. All their t-shirts and other merchandise were removed from the WWE shop website. In 2023, Banks, now going by Mercedes Monet, debuted in New Japan Pro Wrestling and held the IWGP Women's Championship before being sidelined with an injury. Naomi, now going by Trinity, signed with Impact Wrestling, where she won the Knockouts World Championship. Stone Cold Steve Austin's 2002 walkout also stemmed from issues he had with how he was booked. Leading into WrestleMania 18, Austin wasn't booked as the top guy like in recent years. This was largely due to the New World Order getting a significant push after joining WWE nearly a year after WCW folded. The Rock went on to face Hollywood Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania, but Austin was originally booked to face the Hulkster. According to the Sportster, neither Austin nor Hogan wanted to lose the match. Jim Ross said in a June 2020 episode of his Grilling JR podcast that Austin just didn't feel the chemistry. Steve had it in his mind that Hogan's uh, style and Steve's style were like oil and water. Austin's WrestleMania opponent that year ended up being Scott Hall in a match nowhere near the main event. Austin was so frustrated he no-showed Raw the following Monday. Before the June 10, 2002 episode of Raw, things came to a head when Austin learned he was going to lose to Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifying match. Austin walked out, and he was criticized by a number of people on TV that night, including The Rock. The following week's episode saw Vince McMahon address fans to say Austin took his ball and went home followed by toasting the wrestler and leaving a lone can of beer in the ring. Austin and McMahon eventually patched things up, and Austin returned to WWE on the March 3, 2003 episode of Raw, where he delivered a sincere thank you to the fans. Jeff Jarrett and his sidekick, the roadie, real name Brian James, who would go on to be DX's Road Dog, walked out of 1995's In Your House 2, following Jarrett dropping the Intercontinental Championship to Shawn Michaels. During the match, there was some interference by the roadie that backfired, which resulted in Jarrett's loss. What was supposed to happen following the match was a filmed segment of Jarrett and the roadie splitting up with the bombshell that the roadie had been the real voice behind Jarrett's song, With My Baby Tonight. However, that didn't come to fruition. Jarrett and the roadie left the building following the match and quit the then-WWF. Jarrett touched on this moment in a July 2021 episode of his podcast, My World with Jeff Jarrett, and expressed that he and the roadie weren't happy with being split up sooner than they wanted. However, Jarrett regrets putting the roadie's new career in jeopardy. I wish I would have said, I mean, so, you know, Brian, don't leave with me. Jeff Hardy walked out mid-match through the crowd during a WWE house show on December 4th, 2021 in Edinburgh, Texas. Hardy was teaming with Drew McIntyre and Xavier Woods in a six-man tag match. Considering his past issues with substance abuse, many had speculated the episode could have been related to a relapse. Hardy was released from WWE less than a week later, with Fightful noting, WWE reportedly offered Jeff Hardy help and rehab and it was not accepted. Hardy denied he relapsed. I just said, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. Went over the rail and disappeared into the crowd. Naturally, uh, they, they think I took something like drugs or whatever, but I didn't. Neville, who was a massive star in NXT, grew increasingly frustrated with how he was used after he was called up largely performing in the WWE's cruiserweight division. According to the Sportster, Neville thought he would eventually move back to the main roster, but that never happened. Neville walked out before an October 2017 episode of Monday Night Raw after he learned he was booked to lose to Enzo Amore in the main event. According to the Wrestling Observer, Neville and WWE spent months in negotiations to have the wrestler return to television 
but little progress was made. At one point, WWE froze his contract, which put in place an ultimatum of sorts, return to WWE, or both parties would have to come to terms on a contract release. Neville was eventually released from the company in August 2018. In 2019, Neville, now Pac, was one of the first wrestlers to sign with All Elite Wrestling. Jerry Lawler's 2001 exit from WWE was a matter of love. The color commentator walked out during a February 2001 episode of SmackDown in support of his then-wife, Stacey the Cat Carter, who had been fired from WWE. The Sportster noted that Lawler took issue with Carter being fired without any WWE personnel tipping him off beforehand, and he wanted to stand in solidarity with his wife. WWE was surprised he even considered leaving, taking into account how popular he and commentary partner Jim Ross were. Lawler's exit didn't last terribly long. He returned to his commentary role that November after he and Carter separated. Lawler continues to work with the WWE to this day, making periodic appearances on various pre-show programs. At WCW's sold-out pay-per-view in 2000, Chris Benoit defeated Sid Vicious for the vacant WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Despite being the champ, he walked out of WCW the following day before Monday Nitro. Benoit wasn't the only one on their way out. He was joined by Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, and Perry Saturn. All four wrestlers were tired of the chaotic environment of WCW, Malenko said on an April 2020 episode of the AEW Unrestricted podcast. Things started going south a little bit after the NWO came. After the whole NWO thing came in, and then with Kevin Nash kind of taking over there, and we had a conversation between us all, everybody in on the conversation saying it's time to move on because of the politics. Less than a month later, on the January 31st edition of Monday Night Raw, Benoit, Guerrero, Malenko, and Saturn debuted under the collective name The Radicals. Ty Mello signed a developmental deal with WWE in 2016. Then known as Tynara Conti, she took part in the 2017 and 2018 May Young Classic tournaments and was primarily on the NXT brand. After nearly four years in the company, Conti grew frustrated with her role, or lack of one, in the women's division. According to Fightful, Mello walked out during an NXT taping in January 2020 after refusing to take part in a battle royal. In May 2020, she detailed her frustrations with WWE in an interview with Ring the Bell. I tried to change my hair, to change my gimmick, to change my gear. Mello said she was told not to change and that an opportunity was on the way, but it never came. So I was like, <laughs> not happy. Mello was eventually released in April 2020. She debuted in AEW that August and signed with the company in September. According to Fanbyte, the first wrestler to quit the WWE and be dragged on programming was Tom Zink. One half of the Can-Am connection with Rick Martel, Zink suddenly quit following a house show in July 1987. This led to Martel delivering two promos about how he wasn't a quitter. Zink finally broke his silence about his exit during a May 1992 appearance on the radio show Pro Wrestling Spotlight, where he mentioned having a real bad contract, but he also alluded to the recent scandal surrounding the alleged sexual abuse of ring boys in the company. Zink said, I knew what was going on, not with any teenage kids or anything, but there were innuendos when you walked out of the shows. There was an incident the last night I worked, um, I just never said anything. I just said it was the money. I didn't feel like bringing up anything at that time. My goodness, five years later and look at everything that has happened. Gail Kim's wrestling career included two stints with WWE, and during her second stint with the company, she walked out in rather epic fashion. Kim, who had grown frustrated with her place in the then-Divas division, was booked to be part of a Divas Battle Royal on an August 2011 episode of Raw. According to PW Torch, Kim was told she was going to be eliminated from the match within the first minute, so she took matters into her own hands, eliminating herself and promptly quitting. Kim said of the incident in a March 2016 Reddit AMA, I think a few people noticed, but I just had had enough and was done, and I wanted to say again that I would never have done that if it would have compromised anything else in the match, because it did not matter. I did it, and I don't regret doing it either." And then eventually I just became so unhappy and I just couldn't stay. Shawn Michaels walked out of WWE before the episode of Raw following the June 1997 King of the Ring pay-per-view. Michaels had gotten into a brawl with Bret Hart following his infamous Sunny Days promo, in which he insinuated Hart was cheating on his wife with WWE valet Sunny. Bruce Prichard said in a June 2019 episode of his Something to Wrestle With podcast that Michaels burst into Vince McMahon's office, holding two clumps of his hair, adding, 
Sean went on to talk about unsafe working conditions, and he's not going to take it anymore. He's going to go home. Jim Ross also commented on his podcast. What do you remember about that day in the aftermath of Sean saying, I'm quitting? Just more disruption. Michaels returned to WWE a month later, but the tension between him and Hart continued for months, eventually exploding in the infamous Montreal screw job at Survivor Series 1997. The Ultimate Warrior infamously threatened to walk out of WWF and No Show 1991's SummerSlam the day before the event, unless he received a significant raise. Despite granting Warrior his raise, McMahon served the wrestler a suspension by letter just after SummerSlam, indicating he had long planned to suspend Warrior, who eventually left WWE in November 1992. Warrior returned to the company in 1996, but walked out shortly thereafter. The babyface versus heel substack notes that he no-showed a number of events, claiming it was due to him mourning the death of his father. McMahon wasn't buying that reasoning and said Warrior actually had an estranged relationship with his father. On the July 8, 1996 episode of Raw, on screen, WWF President Gorilla Monsoon said that Warrior was suspended indefinitely unless he posted an appearance bond, proving he would show up as advertised at events. That episode was the last of Warrior's work with WWE until he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2014. Warrior delivered a promo on the Raw following that year's WrestleMania, then died the very next day. CM Punk walked out before the Raw following the 2014 Royal Rumble. Punk then infamously appeared on Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling podcast later that year, spilling all the tea on the situation, including receiving notice from WWE on his wedding day that he was released. Punk said that while his booking was definitely a factor in his decision to leave the company, and actually the big thing that led to my decision was my health. In particular, Punk had a long, undiagnosed staph infection. He said that when a doctor actually diagnosed and treated the infection, the doctor physically cut and squeezed the infection on his back. Punk called it the most painful experience of my entire life. Punk was absent from professional wrestling for seven years. He made his return in his native Chicago on August 20th, 2021, with his debut in AEW. That kicked off a run that had plenty of other problems and ended in Punk's firing after All-In 2023 at Wembley Stadium.